Welcome back to Morning Express. It is now time for the Dawn Debate, and that is, uh, well, Tafsiri the band uh, playing right there. And uh, the last one this week, uh, so it has been a very full week politically speaking. The heckling menace started this week and continued yesterday at Ryla's Rally in Kiambu County. The IEBC dilemma over the ballot printing tender still rife even as the presidential candidates met the electoral body on Monday. It is also a week that Kenya was mourning three veteran leaders. Uh, well, in studio to put these into perspective, we have uh, lawyer and analyst Joy Brenda Mudivo and political analyst Hesbon Owila. Welcome, lady and gentlemen, into the studio for the Dawn Debate. Thank and you, let's Mike. start, um, first of all, of course, with uh, the sad note which uh, kicked off, I believe, uh, it was on Saturday. Oh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, with uh, C.S. and Kayseri, uh, you know, dying of a heart attack. We also have Nicholas Biwot, who is one, of course, when you look at the political history of this country, he uh, is featured. We also have Gigi Karaoke. Uh, so basically, let me start with you, Hesbon, on what that means, politically speaking, if at all it means anything. Uh, I think, uh, well, it, it, it means a lot in terms of uh, the electioneering period, especially the death of the cabinet secretary in charge of interior ministry because mm. uh, we are going into an election in the next uh, few couple of days and then losing somebody who is in charge of government coordination security details mm. is, is a big thing for this country but even at, 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 at an individual level family level you realize that the country has lost uh, somebody who has served this country with distinction when he was in opposition i think his track record is straight forth uh, when he moved into government remember he was picked from odm to cabinet to be a cabinet secretary in the jubilee government and and i think uh, uh, to, to by to a large extent he s he did that for the sake of the country you remember the experiences that we had with insecurity and uh, you know the whole country was crying for somebody with with, with the history in, in the security sector somebody who had the authority and the command who could actually handle and i think he did a terrific job you know and losing that kind of a person is unfortunate for this country mm. and uh, all we can do is to condole with the family at this time and hope that we will get another servant for this great nation we also had um, uh, Nicholas Biwot, who of course was a very close ally to um, Moy uh, mm. during his time, and one of mm. those politicians who definitely was very, very powerful, although he had been very silent and quiet towards uh, the end of his life. And uh, uh, Joy, your, your thoughts on possibly politically speaking? Biwot is an enigma. He's one of those people who started out as an astute businessman mm. and uh, learned early on that politics equals power and is good for business. And he went into, into public service. Um, he served his people well, but at the same time, he also grew his empire very vast and very wide. Of course, there have been all these rumors about how paranoid he was and how he was a very He's interesting... He's a mysterious story. man. Yes. But I've listened to other commentators, especially since now he's passed on. There's uh, somebody who did his, uh, one of his biographies, uh, a British man, and he was saying from his interaction with him, all those, the stories you hear about him riding into three cars from here to town and mm -hmm. eating people's meals instead of his own, he said that's, it, it's, it's, it's not as, as uh, exaggerated it's, as we thought. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, one thing that we have to realize is he's one of the few politicians who used to fight back. Whenever you tried to pin something on him, he would take you to court. I mean, he's famous for all his court cases. I, I think he probably is one of those who ripped very, very generously very from, from court cases. Yeah. And it's one of those things that helps me also now in our current situation. We have a lot of witch hunting in our political scenario. We have a lot of um, carelessness with uh, our utterances on social media, especially now. And I think if we have somebody like Abi Watt who would teach people, you know what, what you say has consequences, mm -hmm. we might see a little bit of tempering down and a little bit more of discipline. Mm -hmm. He was loved and lost in equal measure. I'm neither here nor there because by the time I was growing up, his influence was already waning. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's the type of politician, I think, who used politics for his own uh, empire growth but at the same time listening to people eulogizing him from home i realized he had a softer side which most of us were totally unaware of absolutely mm. all right and of course uh, we are going to be keeping you posted on the funeral services as they happen and uh, the burial uh, of all those leaders we also had Gigi karaoke who again uh, mm. when it comes to the politics of this country he has a history uh, right from uh, the moy era and possibly mm. even before before uh, before the yeah, in the before Moy era mm. uh, being there and 
right to his death, he was senator, so he was still very active in politics. And I think he was running again, yes. wasn't he? Yes, yeah, he, he, was. he was. And if you look at what other senators are saying, he was one of the most active senators. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he would go to Senate very early and leave very late, you know. And, and, and I think it's a, good, it's a good example for the emerging political leaders to, to, to have that kind of work ethics, to know that once you're given the mandate to represent a group of people, then you have to take it and do a diligent job. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Now, looking at uh, possibly uh, CS and Kayseri, uh, the Ma community have been hit, uh, you know, by several deaths. We have uh, uh, John Keane. Mm, uh, we Ntimama. also had uh, Olen Timama. Uh, now, uh, CS and Kayseri. So, of course, the Ma community feeling a little bit um, in the cold as it was. So, of course, we'd expect maybe a leader will emerge from the Ma community. And I don't know, speculations of, on who that might be? Uh, uh, Lelenku, maybe? Well, I mean, uh, all, all, all indicators are pointing towards Olelenku uh, simply because they both come from Kajado region and, and of course, uh, the fact that Olelenku is probably well poised, you know, to be the next governor or, or let me say it's a hotly contested uh, gubernatorial race and I think if he emerges the winner, he's likely to take the Ma community mantle as their, you know, kingpin. Okay. All right, let's move on to other things that have happened this week. And, of course, on the spotlight, and not just this week, but for the past few months, is IEBC. Now, there's a ruling uh, waited today for the ballot printing tender. But um, looking at the meeting that took place on Monday, the IEBC called all presidential candidates basically to engage. Mm -hmm. But there was no consensus. Your thoughts, uh, husband, on, uh, well, is IEBC helping itself clear its image so far? I, I think uh, the, the way it is going, it's not so much about IBC as it is about all the political players. And, and it is incumbent about, uh, upon IBC to ensure that w whatever they do is above board, is a bit transparent in the sense that people should understand that uh, in all the effort that they're trying to make to have the presidential ballot papers printed, they're actually doing it you know, in the interest of Kenyans, given the limited time that we have. And I think it's not easy for IBC because the political uh, players, uh, you know, want to come on board. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more difficult when, again, politicians come and want to be stakeholders in the whole process. And then it's the same, same politicians who go back and say that IBC ought to be independent, mm -hmm. you know. So there's a fine line between uh, what, 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 what the court... Uh, uh, anchored its ruling, uh, the issue of public participation and right. what exactly this public participation is. Because, mm. you know, public participation speaks to the issue of citizenship, that the citizens have to be aware of what is going on, they have to be critical of what is going on, and they have to give in their views, you know. And I don't think these citizens are just politicians. So the moment it is restricted to the political class, it is putting IBC in a very precarious position. And uh, my hope is that the court will make a ruling that uh, now IBC will now anchor its actions going forward going forward yeah. George, do you feel like IEBC has come out to take the mantle and the authority that it should have because it is one thing to have the politicians politicking because that's what they do best they will throw stones they will try and question left right and center but it is also the responsibility of IEBC through its chair to come out and make it very clear their position and their authority do you think they've done that effectively that's exactly what Abdul Badida said when they met them on, on Monday. And he told them, look, it's up to you to just go ahead and take charge. Forget about the side shows, just go ahead and take charge. In my opinion, when I, when I read the ruling from the judges, one of the things that stands out, when you talk about public participation, we had public participation when we were getting these commissioners in. We had public participation when we were drafting the bills and the acts that govern this electoral process. We had public participation when we were passing um, some of the regulations that we are going into the um, process with. But now, if you look at each and every action of the IEBC requiring public participation is complete and utter rubbish in my opinion. Because if you've been given a job and you have a job description and we've given you an interview and you realize you're competent to do the job, what is the problem with us waiting for you to do your job and then we come and evaluate it after the job is done. This IEBC commission has not been given a chance to even settle in office. We hounded out the Isaac Hassan um, commission mm -hmm. and brought in a new commission thinking that, okay, fine, we'll have people who are untainted and the have credibility but from the moment they got into office they have been under this 
it's not even a spotlight it's a floodlight and so the deers in caught in the they headlight, caught, caught in the headlight. and can't now move. they cannot move because mm. every time they try to make two steps there's always a hurdle in front of them mm. and then unfortunate thing is that we are throwing the hurdle of court you know if it was just statements and political days and that you can ignore and, and carry on, on. Mm. but when you, somebody has you in court and you're you tied up in court mm. you have to attend court mm. unfortunately our courts are not the fastest things i mean they're not sgr but whatever <laughs> we're still lunatic express when it comes to delivery of justice i mean <laughs> yes. we're taking down evidence at the speed of his lordship's pen mm. we are still far so we cannot even expedite so if we want this iebc process right now where we are with the ruling we're expecting today in my opinion after this let's give it a rest already and it's as, only as 26 an, 25 days yes uh, as an advocate of the, of the high court and and it's it's good to make it clear that uh, nasa had gone into um uh, fault iebc on uh, integrity issues but the court dismissed that exactly. and what they're in court right now is what was brought in by third way alliance and this is public participation yes when it comes to public participation what is the scope what you does see, that mean? And you see now, that's where the devil is in the detail. Because Judge Odunga had already pronounced himself on this matter in an earlier case. And in public participation, at that point in time, was what uh, uh, Awila is saying. Mm -hmm. Get everybody to come and tell you what they think about it. You look at the views that they have brought. They are only persuasive. That it's not mandatory for you to have a consensus agreed by all, but you and must it's take what they say. Impossible to even have a consensus yes. by everybody. Yes. You have to say what they say. You have to take what they say into Consider. account in making your decision. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to what happened on Monday. We sat and looked and, and had this process a whole afternoon. At the end of the day, I was trying to see if I was the IBC. What would I take away from this? And I can say precious little because the, the people were coming with their complaints. We want a clear process. But no, nobody was talking about the nitty-gritty of the tenders. NASA are the ones who actually submitted something later with try Germany, try South Africa, try wherever. But at the end of the day, what value that process added, I it's do not know. Mm. Yeah, and especially this late in the day, mm. is almost zero. So it's one of those things where we need to, to have faith in our commission just because it is our commission. Okay. And nobody else in this country can carry out elections except that commission. Mm -hmm. So if we vilify it and we ourselves choose to ignore them and to, uh, we don't trust you, then at the end of the day, we still have to go back to them. I mean, it's like Chongwa in your doctor and you need medication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, you it, expect it, him to give you it's medication. It's not going to work it's for us. It's not going to happen. Oh, and that brings me now to the next point in regards to IEBC. Is it too little too late for IEBC to exonerate themselves from what would call uh, negative perception from the public? Because they've been beat left, right, center, politically speaking. Is it mm. too late for them now to come out and say confidently, here we are, we are good arbiters, and we have confidence in them. I think it's not too late, uh, though it's unfortunate that they've been dragged to this point in, in the electioneering period. But I would say that after today's ruling, I think it's uh, upon IBC to come out now, you know, uh, and, 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 and get out of these floodlights, you know, and push itself out of the light from the political class and just focus Is it on even possible for them to do that? I because they try, every time they try and get into their offices to work, something else comes I think in. it is possible, because, you know, if you look at, at, at some of these uh, issues that are brought, like public participation, Participation. Public participation takes so many strands. There is the liberal public uh, participation from the liberal democratic tradition, from the Republican, and the liberal one simply says, so long as you don't interfere with what other people are doing, you can actually do what is good in the interest of the people. And to that extent, that is public participation, so long as no one is complaining. And I think IBC can easily do that, that once they get this uh, presidential ballot paper right, they can actually now open up their communication channels and let all Kenyans, because I think the biggest problem is when IBC allows politicians to be gatekeepers of what they tell the public, there is always a problem, because now they'll filter, they'll filter that information and frame it in such a way that people would look at IBC in a very negative Suspicious. way. Yeah suspiciously mm -hmm. and then politicians will be perceived you know as the aggrieved people the people who are not uh, you know in favor with ibc and so on and so forth but i think it's incumbent upon ibc now to find ways and they can easily do that now reach the common citizen with information i think they've tried and you know going to court uh, every now and again does not help 
and I want to believe that today's ruling will, will probably give them some break from the courts and they can now uh, start communicating to the citizenry directly. Okay, mm -hmm. Brenda, and this is in regards now to the NASA flag, uh, fl NASA running mate, Kalonzo Musioka, as late as yesterday, said that if the IEBC do not make, he actually gave an ultimatum, and he said if they do not give the, uh, they, they do not make the, the voter register public, they, he's threatening to go to court. Could that be another stumbling block again that we are maybe going to see? Yes, because in fact, I was, I was wondering who are the strategists for NASA because these court cases must also be draining their own coffers. It must be draining on them as well. You're always fighting. Yeah. When are they going to also... But that's another discussion. What I, I heard from Honorable Calonzo is something that I found very curious. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? It's because ever since we started with the voter registration process, it has been the responsibility of the voter to ensure... Are you registered in the correct place? Now we've opened the register. Go and make sure if you want to change your voting station, you're in the correct place. They went on and told us, now we are opening it up. Come and check that you're in the correct place. Even now, you still have an SMS process where you can check. And if you find you're not in the correct place, you can visit your local IEBC constituency office and ensure that that position is regularized. It's the responsibility of the voter to ensure that their name appears where they want to vote. It's not the responsibility of the IEBC. Now, if I am able to access as a voter, I'm able to access the register to verify my information, that should be enough for me. To require the IEBC to publish the details, the names, the ID numbers, the locations of 19 million Kenyans online with cybersecurity being what it is, is preposterous. Mm. The political parties have been told, if you want this register, give us 20,000 shillings for the photocopying, we'll compile the list for you, we give it to you, in your office you can sit and scrutinize it. But to make it available for all and sundry, I mean, it's, it's one of those things so, that, in my opinion, mm -hmm. even if you go to court and, and you push that, because the, the law requires them to publish the number of voters, the demographic, where they come from, uh, where they're registered, so each constituency. So that information is already public. But to require the names, the voting station, the ID number to be online, in my opinion, is not even wise. It's not something that we want as Kenyans. And I'm not the sure it's voter going to help. Must if, if, if IABC have already given details and said, this is how you verify, exactly. go out and verify. Right. Yes, uh, that the you voter vote. has the responsibility mm -hmm. to do it. Right. So if you find you're in Moranga, go to your local IBC office and say, Eish, I'm in Moranga, I want to come here. Even today, they will change it back for you. So I, I don't understand what the hula balu is all about. All right. As we wind up because of time, let me come to your wheeler. And this is to do with the political tolerance that, or intolerance that we are seeing coming mm. up. Uh, the, we've had uh, both uh, Jubilee and NASA heckled. And literally, some of the speeches had to be cut short or not even uh, done yeah, sure. because of violence. Your thoughts on that? Is, is the country already simmering? I think it's, it's taking us back so many steps to, to, to what, mm. what, what we used to experience when this uh, country was zoned. You know, there was a Kanu zone. There was, I remember as a student at Maseno University in 2002, as a freshman, it was impossible for President Moi to come for a graduation ceremony with Uhuru Kenyatta, who was a presidential candidate then. Mm. But, uh, you know, we made strides. You know, mm. since then we've made strides. I think Uhuru was in Kisumu before uh, last, uh, this incident that happened. Uh, Raila went to, 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 to Kiambu yeah, and he was received. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the question of intolerance is a creation of politicians. And it is sad that uh, at this point politicians are taking advantage of vulnerable Kenyans and making use of a few individuals in public rallies to cause chaos. Mm. What they don't understand is that, uh, you know, in, uh, intolerance in any part of this country is a threat to tolerance in all the parts of this country, right. if I may mm. echo the words of Martin Luther King Jr. And that is what we are seeing, because now we are going to see retaliations after retaliations. Mm. You, you know, uh, the, the crowd in Kisumu said no to, you know, uh, His Excellency mm -hmm. William Ruto speaking to them, and almost immediately that was relayed to Baringo, and they said, you know, even NASA is not going to speak to us. And in 16 minutes, the whole thing that they'd organized just came to a halt. Right. And I think it's incapable. If, if you trace all this, it comes back to a few political because when Uru was planning to visit Luo Nyanza, there's one senator who say that Uru is welcome in Nyanza, but Ruto is not. Mm -hmm. Now you look at that statement uh, and you ask yourself, why was he making this statement? Mm -hmm. And it's also important to know that this has nothing to do with the, the, the principles. I think it is the small politicians in different regions who want mm -hmm. to make themselves to look big, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And therefore what they do is that they tell the principals that, you know, this place is locked. This is your support base. No one else can come here. So when somebody else is coming, they want to do something to show their political masters that, you know what, I've galvanized this area, which mm -hmm. is very unfortunate. Because in politics, especially in a democracy, it is ideas that are supposed to contend. So when you have a crowd that is telling somebody you don't want to listen to you, then the enemy is the person who told them that you should not listen to somebody else. And, and, and Joy, let me bring you in this, uh, looking at even the, uh, the, the, the gubernatorial debate that we had of uh, the Nairobi governors. I don't know if you managed to watch that, but looking at even their language, here you are trying to bring up issues and uh, content in terms of what plan do you have. But it ends up now being a name calling, uh, mud you know, sling. a mud sling. It's about who can sling as much mud as they can. Mm. Is the are we ever going to move, politically speaking, from an era where we are so attached to individuals and we don't care what plan they have? It's them we're attached to, as opposed to the plans and policies that they have. We have got to that place, actually, because from even the comments that came out of that debate, there's one candidate who was quite abrasive, and some people are saying, look, I thought he was what we needed as an alternative, but if that is how he's going to address his peers, mm. that does not work for me. And people are realizing that that mudslinging is not earning them points anymore. It's good for a laugh, but at the end of the day, people are mature. People look at their leaders as a reflection of themselves. You are my representative. Can I be proud to call you my governor if that is what comes out of your mouth? And even with this mudslinging that we're seeing, what we're seeing with the, with the public rallies, that is some, it's so a thing of the past. Many people in that area, if you go and speak with them, they're disgusted by the, the behavior. But because all it takes is a few people to start throwing Disrupt, stones and yeah. the thing is disrupted, you find that the majority are not able to receive what they came for because of the actions of a few. I think this is where we need to see police action being very heavy. If we can identify the troublemakers, one who throws the stone first, catch that dude and just hunker him down. Because most of these things you find... It sours everything. And I, I, I echo what Oila is saying. It's retaliatory now. It's yeah. gotten to a place now with what has happened, even moving forward. I think the, the principles would be better minded to think about should we go into zones that are not perceived to be yeah. our zones. For mm -hmm. the time being, until things sort of calm down. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because unfortunate. in this country, we would benefit from listening, not just to everyone, but also learning from each other. Mm -hmm. Because nobody has everything. If you look at every campaign, there's something you want to take from this campaign to this campaign to form a mega. So we need to understand so that we can make an informed decision. All right. Thank you very much, Joy Brenda, political analyst, also an advocate of the High Court, and Hezbon Awila, who is a political analyst. Because of time, we'll have to wind up there, but there's so much that has happened. And thank you for joining us on the Dawn Debate this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where we end the Dawn deba Debate, the just this particular segment of the show. But do stay with us right here on Morning Express. And a quick reminder, we do have to have Siri the band in the house, and they're going to be giving us some great music right here. We also have hot topics lined up for you. So we are taking a short break. When we come back, we have some highlights. Then we get into the hot topics. Do stay with us.